We add decimal numbers by aligning the decimal points and then adding the numbers that are in the same column. Let's look at our first example. I have 5,003 tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths, plus six and 78 hundredths, plus four thousandths. So I want to add these numbers up. So what I'm going to do is write them vertically with the decimal points aligned. Now, it's okay if we want, when we're doing this addition, to think of zeros as being here like that if you want to see all the numbers lined up. You don't need to write those if you don't want. Now, I'll add in columns. I get 3, 4, 8, 7, and 6 and 5 is 11. So, I get 11.7843 for the sum of these three numbers here. And so, the rule is simply align the decimal points and then add the numbers that are in the same column or add numbers with the same place value. Here's another example. I have 89.7854, 3.4, 65.35, and 100.006. So I could, if I want, fill in zeros in these places right here if I want to, but um, I won't do that. I'm just going to add in columns. So I add in this column. I get 4. I add in this column, 5 and 6 is 11, so I carry the 1 to the next column. 8 and 5 is 13, plus 1 is 14. Carry that to the next column. 7 and 1 is 8, and 4 is 12, and 3 is 15. Now I put my decimal point in, carry that 1 to the next column. 10 and 3 is 13, and 5 is 18. Carry the 1 to the next column. 8 and 1 is 9, and 6 is 15 carry that one, and I end up with 2. So 258 and 5,414 tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousandths for the answer to that. But you can see I've aligned my decimal points here. The decimal point in the answer goes directly below the decimal points in the problems. And then I've added the numbers that have the same place value or added the digits with the same place value. Let's look at a subtraction problem. I want to subtract 34.07 minus 6.18. Notice that I'm going to start in the rightmost column. I want to subtract 8 from 7. I can't do that, so I need to borrow. I go to the next column, I find a 0. Can't borrow from that. I go to the next column, I find a 4. I'll borrow that w one of those. This is four ones. I'll borrow one of those. What I'll have left is 3. When I borrow one of those, what I do is write it as 10 tenths. So I'll make that a 10. Now I can borrow one of those tenths. So I'll have 9 tenths. And what I'll do with that is write it as 10 hundredths, so I end up with 17 here. 8 from 17 then will be 9. Then 1 from 9 will be 8. Put the decimal point directly below the decimal points in the problem that are lined up. 6 from 3, I can't do that, so I'm going to borrow 1 10 here. So I'll have 2 tens left, and the 10 I borrow I'll write as 10 ones, so that's 13. 6 from 13 is going to be um, 7. 6 from 13 is 7, and then 0 from 2 will be left with 2. So you can see that I do my borrowing in the same way that I did borrowing with whole numbers. Here I needed uh, to borrow in this column right here. I went to this column that was a 0. I couldn't borrow, so I go to this column. I had a 4, so I borrowed 4 ones, so I borrowed one of those. I was left with 3 ones. The 1 that I borrowed, I wrote as 10 tenths. Then I borrowed one of those tenths, so I only had 9 tenths left and I used it as 10 one hundredths, so I had 17 one hundredths here. So 8 from 17 gave me 9, so on and so forth, right back the other way. This is a good problem to try on your own because it has a lot of borrowing in it. If you can do this problem, you're not going to have any trouble with borrowing with decimal numbers. Let's look at our next problem. This problem is for the pre-algebra students. We have 28.96 minus 149.37. So I'm going to think in terms of addition that this is 28. 0.96 plus a negative 149.37. Now, you know, to do this kind of addition with positive and negative numbers, I have to subtract the number with smaller absolute value from the number with the larger absolute value because the signs are different. So I have this 149.37. I need to subtract from that 28.96, just using normal subtraction. 6 from 7 is 1. 9 from 3 I can't do, so I borrow 1 here. That makes that 13. 9 from 13 will be 4. 8 from 8 is 0. 
2 from 4 is 2, and 0 from 1 is 1. So I get 120.41. That's the absolute value of the answer. And then I, the sign of the answer is the sign of the number with the larger absolute value. So negative 120.41. And remember, this is a problem for the pre-algebra students that have already worked with positive and negative numbers. If you're just taking basic mathematics, you haven't seen the negative numbers yet, so this isn't going to make as much sense to you. Let's try one more of these problems. Negative 8 minus 0 0.327. This is going to be negative 8 plus negative 0 0.327. So now I'm going to add two numbers with the same sign. So I add absolute values, and I get 8.327, and I use the common sign, which is negative. So the answer to that is negative 8.327. And that's a look at addition and subtraction with decimal numbers.